If you're wondering if you can make the design by Juju Christmas tree skirt using a single needle embroidery machine like the Brother SE1900, then this is the video for you. Because I want to tell you that yes, 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 you can make it. So don't feel discouraged. It may take a little bit of time, but yes, you can make it. Hi everybody, I'm Ali. Welcome to my YouTube channel where we are going to make beautiful things together. Today, I am not doing a tutorial. This is a pattern review and kind of like a process review of how to make the embroider designed by Juju Christmas tree skirt. This is a beautiful, absolutely gorgeous project that I decided to take on the challenge because I fell in love with it the moment I saw it and I just had to have it. However, I only have a single needle embroidery machine as the Brother SE1900, so I was a little concerned that I could actually make this big, beautiful project with all the colors and everything with my little machine. But the machine stepped up to the challenge, <laughs> just like I did, and it turned out beautiful. Now, I don't consider myself an expert, and as you can see in my playlist here, these are the only projects that I have done with the embroidery machine. So you can tell that I am definitely not an expert, but if I was able to do it, then you can do it as well. It will take a lot of patience, but it is possible. There is a little section at the end of the video where I show you how I added the backing to the skirt after all the panels were sewn together. This is the only part of the video where I show a little bit of a tutorial. The design by Juju instructions are so well written that I had no issue following their instructions at all. But I decided to record that video because sometimes people prefer to also, you know, compare the written instructions to a video or they just like to see the video. So if you wanna see how I added the backing, then that section is in this video. You can click down in the descriptions where I added the timestamps and you can jump to that section if you want to. There are also links to all the materials I've used, some of those are an affiliate, but I am not, not an affiliate of Design by Juju, and this is not a sponsored video. However, I've added the link to Design by Juju's um, pattern if you want to go get it. Now, this project took me weeks, if, probably like two and a half months to complete. And if you follow me on social media, especially on TikTok, you would have seen the process and how when I started and like the build up of the process of putting this skirt together. I even did a couple of live videos on TikTok when I was stitching the panels together. So if you follow me on social media, you may see some steps or some processes of things that I'm working on, more like behind the scenes stuff. This design came with in three sizes, um, but I'm making the smallest one because my hoop is the five by seven. That's the biggest hoop I have, which is the smallest size the pattern came in. So that worked out for me. Now, the preparation for this took a little while because, you know, I had to find the fabric, which was the most fun part of the whole process and buy all the materials like the batting, the stabilizer, and the embroidery threads. I had purchased, when I purchased my machine, my embroidery machine, I purchased a set of embroidery thread that had like 60 colors. And I pretty much used most of these colors. Now, when I was looking at the design by Juju, um, description and details for each one of the embroidery patterns. They sort of recommend that you use the brand Floriani 
for your thread. But what I have is the brother thread. So I started doing the conversion. I started looking for the conversion. I couldn't find any. So I started doing the conversion manually. And actually, my mom helped me with that process. When I was uploading the designs to the embroidery machine, the program automatically converts the colors to the brother color code. And I did not know that. So... I feel like I kind of wasted a little bit of time converting the colors, you know, but at the same time, it the the machine did not convert all of the colors. And some of them, it was saying that um, the colors that it didn't have, it was turning it into like a dark gray or a black, and they wouldn't really look good with that color, the final design. So yes, it was good to have the conversion, but if it's a smaller design that you don't need so many colors, you don't need to do the conversion manually. Also, the PDF file with all the instructions from Design by Juju has a nice drawing of the final piece with all the colors that you will use as a guide. So even if you don't have this specific color, you can look at the color on the PDF file and actually decide and compare to what you have and decide what you know, will look best with your design and your fabric that you're using for the background color. Now, I tried to prepare everything before I started stitching, and that included the bobbins, making sure I had as many bobbins as possible that were full before I started embroidering because, you know, I ran out of bobbin thread like right in the middle of the embroidering uh, design and I wanted to have them regularly available. At the end, I ended up using about 15 bobbins, if not more, and I had to clean the machine a couple of times to remove all the lint. And I had to change the needle about two or three times because it will get dull. So this was pretty intense. Now, the design that was the two designs that were the most intense, I would say, were the three kings and the camels because they had so many colors. And so because it's a single needle machine, I had to constantly change the colors. So, and I will like change the color, the thread color, and then it will stitch for like a minute. And then I had to change the thread color again and stitch for another minute and change the color again. So that took the longest time because I had to do it constantly. So this is definitely a project that even if I think I would have taken like an entire weekend to do it, I don't think I would have finished it. This, I had to work on it all during the weekend and weeknights, etc. So I don't think if you have a single needle machine that dedicating just a weekend for this is going to be enough. So once all the pieces were done, 45 of them, and I had to trim the seam allowance to half an inch all around it and cut, of course, all the thread and the stabilizer out and make sure they look good. And I thank my mom for that because she really helped me with that process. Then it was time to join the pieces together and make each panel. So each panel has three pieces. So you will have a total of 15 panels. This part is like a fun little puzzle because that's where you are going to decide uh, 
what goes with what and which words are you going to place with what image and the stars and the cities and the little town, etc. So this was fun. So once you join the pieces to form a panel, make sure you press the seam so that it can be nice and open. And then you should have total 15 panels, as I already mentioned. Now you're going to join these panels together. And after you join them together, following the instructions, you're going to stitch them along the outer stitch line. You're going to press the seam open again. Now make sure you don't join the two panels on the back. You need to have them open. Before we continue, if you feel like you have learned anything today, would you consider hitting the like button and subscribing to this channel? This will help me more than you know. And let me know down in the comments if you will consider making this Christmas skirt this year, for next year. Let me know. I would love to hear from you. Now to join the backing, I'm going to follow the instructions from the pattern, right? So I took a piece of fabric that was 39 inches wide by 39 inches long, and I folded this fabric in half. So I ended up with a piece that was 39 inches long by 19 and a half inches wide. I placed the skirt on top of this piece of fabric and I made sure that I folded the skirt in half and I placed that folded piece along the fold of my backing. Now using my erasable pen, I marked the center circle of the skirt and the opening of the skirt on the backing fabric. this point, I measure, kind of eyeball it, right? A location on that backing fabric to embroider the year that I made this skirt. That's optional, completely optional. It was something I wanted to do so that I remember I made this in 2022, 20 years from now. So what I did is that I took a, a chalk and I pl placed a, a little mark where I think I wanted that year to be embroidered. And I took it to my embroidery machine and I pretty much used the regular fonts that come with the machine. Now, when I joined the skirt to the backing, I used a lot of pins for this process to make sure the skirt wouldn't move uh, as I'm sewing them together. Then I stitched the skirt together to the backing, only on the sides and the bottom of the skirt. Then you're going to trim off all the excess fabric, making sure to follow the seam allowance. So the skirt and the backing should mirror exactly the same. There shouldn't be any leftover overlapping fabric on either the backing or the skirt. 
Next, you're going to clip all the curves at the bottom of the skirt. That will allow it to, when you turn it right side out, to lay flat. So make sure you go through every curve, clip as many as you need to, and then turn it right side out through the opening at the top curve uh, that we did not stitch. Then I top stitch it along the sides, the bottom, and in between each panel to join the skirt to the backing. After that, all I did was I added some bias tape that I purchased. So I bought red bias tape, extra wide, double fold, and it worked perfectly for this project. So you add your bi uh, bias tape along the top opening or the circle now, one thing I had to do was to trim the seam allowance on the top to a half, to, so to a quarter inch. That way the bias tape will cover the stitch line. The bias tape is 39 inches long. So I measured the center of the skirt and the center of the bias tape and placed it and aligned those two markings and place the bias tape using clips. Then I stitch the bias tape in place. I thought I was going to stitch all around the bias tape, like top and bottom, but then I decided not to because I really liked how it looked just with one stitch. I like that look better. Now, if you want to learn more information about the Brother SE 1900, or if you're thinking about getting an embroidery machine, I have a great video here where I went over all the parts of my Brother SE 1900 
and you can check it out here.